What if you could help others to find the power to heal themselves, physically, emotionally, and spiritually? When I started teaching my classes, it was in 2002, and I was just doing the past life regressions and contacting the subconscious part. But then as the time went on and we found how powerful this was and what we could do with it, a lot of the students began saying, you know, advanced past life regression doesn't really tell what it's all about. This is so much more than that. We think you should change the name. So it was a few years ago, we decided to change the name to Quantum Healing Hypnosis Technique. And this is the healing technique that we've now been teaching it, well, since 2002, that's 12 years. What if you could time travel with them? Visit mythical places or angelic realms, other worlds, other galaxies. Help others to speak to their higher selves. You can. Dolores has taught thousands of people from across the world how to use QHHT and now you can learn her method by going directly to DoloresCannon.com and don't forget to mention the discount code MORETALKS. Established over 100 years ago, Watkins Books is one of the world's oldest and leading independent bookshops specializing in esoterica. We have the widest selection of esoteric books in the UK, and our friendly and knowledgeable staff are here to assist you in a unique ambience of our shop. So come and visit us in the heart of London as we're open every day. The Moore Show is supported by Mindscape, Paranormal and UFO Matrix magazines. Available for download on all major digital platforms. The comments and views expressed on The More Show are those of the people that make them and do not necessarily reflect the view of Kevin Moore, The More Show, or this radio station and its affiliate or sponsors. This show is for entertainment purposes only. Broadcasting from the UK and across the world online, you're now watching the UK's only alternative late night talk show, and I'm Kevin Moore. For the next hour, I'll be covering subjects that will open up your mind and provide you with information you may have never heard before. On today's show, I'm joined with Gordon Asher Davison, who has had a long career of active leadership in social change institutions and movements, while simultaneously pursuing a deep inner meditative life culminating in his book, The Transfiguration of Our World, How a Light Alliance is Transforming Darkness and Creating a New Earth. Now, he offers many clients worldwide deep spiritual guidance and transformational consultations, which he has been doing for over 20 years. Gordon Asher Davison, welcome to the show. Well, thank you for inviting me. It's a pleasure to be with you. It's uh, fantastic to have you on, uh, like I say to a lot of my guests, because this is always uh, a time for learning, uh, not just for the audience, but for myself as well. Um, now... Uh, we're going to be discussing your latest book today, The Transformation of Our World, How a Light Alliance is Transforming Darkness and Creating a New Earth. It's actually, uh, it's actually the transfiguration of our world. Transfiguration. Sorry, I do apologize. Transfiguration. And on the screen now uh, will be the book and just a bit of information about the book as well. Um, but this isn't your first book. Uh, you've co-authored a number of other books as well. Yes, with my wife, Corrine McLaughlin, we wrote a book called Spiritual Politics um, with a foreword by the Dalai Lama. We've written a book on spiritual communities called Builders of the Dawn and another book called The Practical Visionary. So we've been writing for quite some years. If you could sum up um, your purpose right now in a very short um, um, amount of, of words, if that's possible, what it would is. you say your purpose is? My purpose is to communicate to humanity 
a vision and an understanding of what is happening on our planet today, which is very different than what people are receiving through the mass media, which is controlled by certain forces who do not want humanity to have a positive vision, and actually give that positive vision to humanity and help everyone understand how this is unfolding on the earth right now. Okay, okay. Now, um, we had a, a very brief conversation off air. Um, uh, I, I explained to you that, that I've been, been ch- uh, receiving, call it channeling, whatever, you know, I, I maybe am preferring the word receiving right now in the channeling, but it's the same thing. You mm-hmm. have a telepathic link to, to your um, source because uh, this information that, you've, that, 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 that that's in this book um, hasn't uh, really, it's come through you, but it's not of you. Is that, would you say that's true? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Well, it's a combination. It's a mind to mind link. And of course, everything that's communicated has to work through my mental system, of course. And, yeah. but I, I Clairvoyantly hear, clairaudiently hear the actual words, and then um, can comment, ask questions, and we have a dialogue that happens all the time. Right. Okay. So just for the people who may not understand what we're talking about right now, uh, and I want a bit of back information about yourself, if possible, as well. Um, but but um, you are um, in communication with some with a uh, higher dimensional spiritual being called the master is that right yeah a master of the wisdom someone who has been through the human incarnational experience through multiple lifetimes has mastered all the levels of human experience and is actually in a sense a graduate of not no longer needing to reincarnate and can actually appear and disappear at will that is my that's the real definition of a real master right and so the, the this being works on the inner planes with a large group of people in an inner ashram where there is a tremendous amount of work and planning and transmission of ideas and energies to support humanity going through this huge shift that's underway on our planet right now. Oh, okay, okay. So this is a being from another, from an, another dimension. Is this yes. potentially the dimension that we can go to when we pass on? Yes, ultimately, okay, yes. Okay. Yes. So, so it's the same. one of the many possibilities. <laughs> one of the yeah, I get told by my channelings there's uh, unlimited, there's infinitive levels to go to. Indeed, and 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 you know, they're, even where they're at, they're still trying to work out their truth. They have exactly. a truth. It, it's all, it's all, it's an infinite. You know, as Christ said, in my Father's house there are many mansions. Yes. <laughs> That's yes, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. So we're on the same level. Um, now, when I channel uh, or receive, um, I'm, I'm not unconscious. I, I, I'm there and I could stop it at any, any time. Um, but I have to go to a, a, a level to get there. I have to, you know, there's a certain practice I have to do to, to, to get there that yes. works for me. You're yes. saying you won't go, you, you're saying you're, you're uh, conscious into the point where it's a, t- a telepathic link in a sense. Yes, Is that well, right? I've, been in, I've had this meditative practice for 40 years. I've had this relationship for 20 years. And I was deeply trained by him and others on how to maintain this link. And over the years of holding that consciousness and that focus in the higher levels for you know extended periods, long meditations for many, many years, now it's very easy. I can, in, you know, within two seconds or five seconds, be in that, con- that connection. Right. That makes a lot of sense because, as you see, receivers out there that, 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 that do it, um, um, the genuine ones, because you know, there are some fake ones, I'm sure there are, who believe they're doing it for, for genuinely, but actually it's maybe sure. they're connecting on lower level uh, vibrations than, 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 than what that, you are. That's um, right. Yeah, um, 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 but but they're, 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 the genuine ones out there have the same gift as you in the sense where they're now, over time, when they've worked on it, are now able just to be in this moment now and, and, and switch into it. Yes. So, so what so I'm they, saying is that they would call it one thing, you're calling it this. Is it not the same thing in a sense? Well, there are many, many fine uh, aspects to this work. You know, it's, a, it's not quite as simple as everyone thinks. And there's a lot to it in learning how to discriminate what level you're actually connecting to, recognizing the energetic signatures of different levels and frequencies and different beings so that you, you become more you know, experienced and skillful at identifying what you're connecting with and then getting the abil- developing the ability to really clearly have it enter without any projections or additions or coloring from your own subconscious 
from your own ideas and attitudes. That's the hard part. <laughs> That's the hard part. You've got that dead right. <laughs> that is the hard part. Uh, um, um, okay, very interesting. Very interesting. Um, where did it all start from you? Where did the voice of the master come from? Where, what, what was the, the pivotal point for you? What, what was going on in your life at the time to cause this to happen? Well, it's a very interesting story. I, I, I've been a meditator for 40 years. 20 years ago, uh, I went through a, we went through a very, very traumatic experience where our house was burned down to the ground by an arsonist, and we lost everything we owned. And I was very upset and angry with God, Really, let's, I, you know, I'm a good spiritual person. I've been working all my whole life for spiritual work, and you burn my house down. What is this all about? And I, I got very upset. It was a very challenging experience in many ways. I went through a very long process over a year and a half of trying to understand that and finally came to realize that it really was my will that was getting in the way because we had moved back to our spiritual community and put everything we owned back in our house, did not stay in Washington, D.C., where we was and start a center, which my wife wanted to do. I said, no, we want to go back to our community and live there. We went back there. A month later, a house burns to the ground. And I realized, in the end, it was my self-will. You know, I'm doing what I wanted to do rather than what was really being asked to do. So we went back to Washington. I went through this long process of, we didn't know where we were going to live, what we were going to do, nothing. Everything was gone. And then I just said, I surrender. I just, I give up. I give up my personal will. I will simply do whatever is for the highest good. Tell me what that is. I don't know anymore, and I have no more will. I want to do only the highest, higher will. That moment, that was when the contact with the master began. Wow. Okay, that's, that's pretty profound. It was incredibly powerful, yes. Yes, and there's, and, and there's a lot more I could say about that story, but the contact was very beautiful in the beginning and the first thing that happened i'll just tell you one example it was he's the very beginning he said well we want to we want to help you get prepare for this work so we want you to develop more will and i said wait a minute i said i think i have plenty of will i think i need to develop more love and he says congratulations you just passed the first test never accept anything we say just because we say it if it doesn't make sense to you that again is very profound. Isn't that interesting? I mean, not not only did you have to trust that you know when you when when you when you went with, with the with, when you surrendered that what was coming through to you was a true uh, uh, voice in a sense a true communication. Uh, 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 yet it, it, straight away you were onto you know experiences like that. Yeah, um, yeah. and many many yeah, others. And, and, it, and it and it wasn't instantaneous that I totally trusted it. You know, it took me a long time to really get to the point. Of, and through experiences of actually working with what the guidance was that was being offered and doing things and carrying out projects that turned out really well and following that advice, you know, not commands but always just suggestions then I, my life started to really work in a very powerful way, and I realized that this was genuine and, and something to be highly valued. Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes. And, and, and um, um, your partner as well, your wife, um, um, is she, she must be very light-minded in, in a sense. Oh, yes. She's totally into all these spiritual things as well, and she receives things more intuitively through her own process, not quite the same way I do, but she gets a lot of insight as, as well. And, and how, how do you find that, having someone that's, you know, it's, it's the same, uh, not abilities, but share the same um, qualities oh, in a sense, yeah. It's, it's, it's wonderful. I mean, it's, mm. I, I don't, I'm sure I probably would never have achieved all of the things I've achieved in this life without, you know, she has been fantastic and her, her insight, her you know, her love and, 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 and all of what she brings to our relationship is so invaluable. So, so when the house burnt down, if you don't mind me asking, um, how old were you at the time? And, and really, you know, had, you, had your normal job sort of let, you know, gone south in a sense and, and you were concentrated on really then, you know, pushing forward, you know, with your yeah. spiritual work in a way? Yes, I, I, I had been working for some time in the financial world with social investing. I was the founder of the Social Investment National Association here in the U.S. 
and I worked with a lot of people to, you know, ethical investing. And um, then I kind of moved out of that, and we had just written this book, Spiritual Politics, and we were preparing to go on a 30-city book tour to publicize it, and that's when the house burned down. <laughs> we didn't even have any clothes. We didn't have anything. We had to start with nothing to go on this tour. Incredible. It was quite an experience. <laughs> but you did go on the tour? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Oh wow, that's incredible. That's hats off to you, really. Um, wow. That that. Well, thank you for sharing that backstory with us. I think it's important just to get to know you. And my final thing is as well. I, I may have said this before. Sorry if I'm repeating, but uh, the master is not the true name, as you understand it, of what you're cha- uh, what you're receiving, what your telepathy, te- what you're, what's coming through. Um, but we're not going to give the name. I don't know the name, but you're not going to give the name because you don't want to. Um, yeah, it, it's it, you. You over the years, you felt it's the right thing just to put that to one side. It's about the information, not who's right, bringing the right. information. And, and also because a lot of people are talking about channeling every master you've ever heard of, from Jesus and Buddha and you know, Santa it's possible Kamara, some of them I'm are down. I'm sure you've seen it on the internet, and and most of all of that is coming from the astral plane. And it's a plane where you will receive exactly what you want to receive. It's it's the plane of desire. So you will get whatever you desire to hear, but that doesn't mean it's, it, it may be fine and it may be relatively harmless or it could be d- misleading, but it, it, it's not the same as when you receive from the buddhic level, which is above the astral at the higher levels, and it really is a clear, much more powerful and broad, encompassing picture of what is going on in the world, you know, w- w- what are the causes of the way things are, are in the world, all, all that that kind of level. What what? Sorry, what level was that, Gordon? The buddhic, the, the buddhic. buddhic. Yeah, the buddhic, or and it's a, it's also the it's a combination of the higher mind, the buddhic or the higher intuition, and the atmic or the plane of the will. So it's like those three frequencies, those three high levels blended together. You you make a very powerful contact. Very, very, very interesting. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much for that. Well, let's get into your book. Um, you know, we've touched on about 30 minutes of your backstory there, which I think is important just to go over, just for, sure. you know, to, to know a bit about yourself. Uh, very interesting. Now, um, what drove you to write this book, uh, in a sense? What, well, what, yeah. <laughs> since, since I started this contact 20, 20 years ago, what happened, it unfolded, I was trained, and given I many, many experiences, I could talk for hours about the incredible inner experiences I've had. And then at the, over the last three or four years, I started receiving a lot of information about what is going on in the world. Why is it so chaotic? What is happening? And really detailed history of, a, of our human history from a different level and perspective. Um, all kinds of things about the light and the dark and how it functions on the planet. And I was encouraged to create a tele, a, a, a sense but I did an international teleseminar on that theme, on um, transfiguration of our world, and that was very successful. And then I was encouraged to write a book about it from all the material and put it out into the world. Now, I didn't want to do it because, it, you know, to step out of the world, I had somewhat of a mainstream career and say, okay, I'm, I'm here to tell you about galactic civilizations and the masters and the battle of light and dark on the planet. And, you know, it's a huge <laughs> leap. And... I was somewhat, you know, I had real concerns about doing it, but they convinced me and asked me to not order me. There's never any, you know, enforcement or, you know, manipulation or control, but it's always just my choice. Ultimately, I decided it was the right thing to do. And I, since I put out the book, it's been fantastic. I mean, the response has far exceeded anything I ever had imagined it would. And it's doing extremely well, and I have a lot of things going now around that book, including I do a program once a month called Galactic News, updates from the Light Alliance, where I give people the latest information I'm receiving about what's going on from an inner, deeper perspective. And isn't that fan- the fantastic part of the internet as well, where you can share these messages? <laughs> Absolutely. You, it's great. Absolutely. Yeah. It is extraordinary. Yeah, I, I, you know, I have about 170 people all over the world listening to this every month, and uh, I just do it. I have my nice little studio right here in front of my computer i don't have to go anywhere and it's extraordinary <laughs> no no you it actually looks really really beautiful where you are where are you actually because that looks like some beautiful uh, 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 forest in the background <laughs> this is my home yes 
we live on the top of a hill, a, a small hill in uh, Marin County in California, and it is a place. And um, this is, the, you're looking into my living room. Yes. And uh, I have my camera mounted up right in front of me, and then I have a really good quality studio mic. And it just works absolutely fantastic. Excellent, excellent. Okay, now, uh, you know, I'm edging to get into the book. I know we are slowly. Now, um, mm, okay, let's start with, you know, our, let's just briefly touch on the planetary history and the forces of, of, of light and darkness. And also, when touching on this, surely to have experience on planet Earth, we need to have opposites here. Well, that is, has been the method of our evolution for, since the beginning. That's correct. And, that, and it, it's very interesting how that all came about, because that is the key to the whole understanding of our evolutionary experience, which is Earth was originally created to be a garden planet, you know, like the Garden of Eden, and there were beautiful nurturing with energy available and all the resources available for all the life on the planet to grow and unfold. But what happened millennia, many millennia ago, a group of aliens did enter the planet. Although the planet was guarded and protected, there was like a, a time-space wormhole anomaly that opened up, and they were able to enter into the planet. And there were about 50 of these predatory-type ETs from outside the planet. And that was not intended, but and they hid for a brief period of time, and then they were, of course, discovered by the guardians of the planet. And a huge discussion ensued about whether they should remo be removed, which they could have been, or left here to become part of our evolution. And it was decided at that point that we would benefit as an evolving life by having the dark present here, and that we would be faced from that time on with the choice between the path of selfishness and darkness and greed and control, or the path of light and love and, and service. And the masters would come and give us the teaching of the lighted way, and the dark side would be present in the material dimensions, and they would tempt everybody with the possibility of unlimited power and wealth and all that. And so the battle for the light, the heart and soul of humanity has been on, ongoing ever since. And we all choose what we're going to align with, and in making that choice, we learn from the karma of our choices, right? Because we, every choice has a consequence. And then in the end, we make, hopefully the goal is to make better choices and to grow and evolve spiritually. That is the story of our evolutionary process. So this has been going on for a very long time. And the, the dark forces that have become very well organized with tremendous amount of control over many, many of the systems of Earth, including the media, the financial, political, and they have been gradually gaining more and more ability to manipulate and control humanity with the help and cooperation of human beings who work with them. So, so just so I've got this right, because that was a lot to take in there. Uh, I'm sorry, the, the, I'll slow the, down. <laughs> no, 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 please don't, no, no, but, but just so I've got this right, uh, the dark forces, um, in a sense, uh, are, are they interdimensional beings? Yeah, well, yes, they, they, they did have ability to move through other dimensions in humans. But there were only 50 of them that started this whole control system. But because of the powers that they have had, where they could, could exert telepathic control over people, they could see some aspects of the future, they had psychotronic equipment, things they could magnify their uh, psychic abilities, they were so able to, over, to, to sort of awe humanity that many, many human beings agreed to participate and become part of their their game because they gain, those human beings would gain power and prestige and money and all the rest. So that's, that's not only these original group, but a huge group of humans who have cooperated with them over the centuries and, and millennia. And, and, okay. Um, and, and sorry, where did they come from again? Outside the planet, from outside this, uh, the, this solar system. And, and outside the solar system so okay and and uh, uh, do they breed i mean are they are they are they, are they, are they immortal yeah. i mean yeah they they ne they they never were killed until recently something happened which i definitely want to talk about they they um could interbreed with humans just and then they did and they they could shape shift as well well, that's a bit like what David Icke talked about. With, 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 yeah, there is there is some truth in what David Icke says, although he gets a little carried away, in my view. But but definitely there is some truth in it. Yes, and so that 
establish this whole system of control that they built up over many, many millennia. And the goal was to make this into like, really fulfill the Nazi vision. You know, the, the World War II was an attempt to take over the planet by those forces using the Axis powers, but the Allied allies were reinforced by the light. The galactic um, civilizations did not directly intervene, but they supported energetically the, the allies, the light side. So we were able to destroy the the human cooperators with that. And, and what happened was we pushed the the dark aliens onto the astral plane, off the physical plane, and put them, what's called, seal them behind the door where evil dwells. And the way that we they would be kept in that sealed up state was if we as humanity did not open up the door through indulging in greedy, selfish, um, you know, uh, evil act activities. We were not able to keep that door closed. And they reemerged after the war and reestablished their control systems and re re came into, once again, into power. And that's what has happened. And that has continued. And, they, and I, if anyone who's really watched what's going on in the political systems, the financial systems, you can see how much they have exerted control so that the systems only benefit those at the top and many, everybody else, you know, is being used. That's been more and more, is being more clearly recognized by humanity, which is a very important part of the plan. So, so someone that's acting in a in a unforgiving way, in a sense, or doing something that's quite callous towards others, um, they may not uh, be in direct communication with these entities, but telepathically, uh, they're being manipulated, in a sense. And well, yeah, to different to different degrees. I mean, not everyone who's you know selfish means that they're being manipulated directly, but they're contributing to the frequency field that reinforces their power and their control so so these entities are sucking off energy from people yeah, in they, a sense. They, they live on yeah. negative energy yeah yeah they live but on they, fear they, that's why they're constantly trying to cultivate more and more fear because that's the way they need that energy to live off and they use it to control humanity Where's that work in ideas where people say, well, you know, perhaps as a soul, agreements have been made where, you know, if I be the murderer, you, 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 you know, you, you be the uh, victim uh, and, and, you know, it, we're going to get something out of having this experience um, and, and, and we're going to come down with free will not to do it. But, you know, it's there if, you know, if, if it's going to go that way uh, to, to get an experience which they couldn't do on a soul level. Um, and, and, you know, that idea wouldn't mean they've been manipulated by some third party in a sense. Um, but, you know, is there a bigger picture to a lot of things going on and you, this work sort of ties into another area of it in a sense? Or we yeah, could... yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I think the, the one, one of the most fundamental things that's going on that explains a lot is that we're in the ending of a karmic cycle. And it's not just a karmic cycle for us as individuals or even as nations, but it's a karmic cycle for the whole world that we are fulfilling as much as possible under the current circumstances. People are paying back the karma that they need to in order to liberate themselves from the weight and burden of that karma. And so, and that's happening in, at the level of nations. It's having happening individual level and it's happening at a, at a planetary level so that we and we're there's going to be a point where all that karmic thing is going to be there's going to be a the cycle will close and there will be no more of that particular karmic pattern and then we will start a whole new cycle again and that's what i want to talk about because this is the most important part of the whole story of course is it is what's happening now and of, 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 of course and, and how we can fix this absolutely and uh, uh it, but it's just fascinating that the, the, the times that your, your your work has done in some respects um yeah i mean i um okay so if there uh, where does where does your work tie into what we were just talking about though in the sense of um you know soul contracts and why why does the soul incarnate on planet why does the soul you know choose to come here uh, if it's got you know if if it's this bad in a sense what what's the soul getting out of it P well, putting the soul a... is the soul's primary motivation always always is service 
is trying to help, trying to raise the frequency, you know, contribute to the liberation of people from all that holds them down, you know, that keeps their in fear or lesser sense of who they are as a being, you know, all of those things. We're always, the souls are here for that reason. Now, so, the souls may take on many, many different roles, and some of them may take on the role of, you know, being an instrument of intense karma toward, uh, of other people. It doesn't mean they're free from the consequences of doing that. They still would be responsible for the consequences. But that may be part of the higher plan of why they are here and what they're doing. But in the end, we are all responsible for the, to deal with the consequences of whatever we set in motion. Which is, which, which, is, which is then separate to these, if we want to call it, invading aliens in a sense and, fee, you know, you know, and, and being manipulated by them. That's a separate uh, karmic cycle, what's going on. But that negativity still feeds into you know, those that were left behind in a sense uh, mm -hmm. on, on these. Uh, would, you call them, would you say they're maybe on a, a lower astral plane or they're physically here? Oh, um, they primarily were, op were operating on the astral plane. This is this is the important point. They're no longer here. This is what I want to get to. Right. Okay. Let's get to that. Yeah. Let's get the idea. Yeah. It's very important. Yeah. So so uh, uh, when did they? Uh, you kind of explained that they went uh, away after the World War Two, then they came back. But you're saying now, it's you know, even though there's a lot of noise out there and there's a lot of negativity in some respects, they've gone. Right. right. Well, what happened? And this is very very the fundamental core. One of the most important things I I, I share with people is nine eleven. You know, the, the thing at the World Trade Towers was an orchestrated event intended to create maximum amount of fear to actually um, make people more um, uh, easy to control. And it was and to institute controls on people's freedom through the Patriot Act and invade the Middle East and get control of the oil and all, all these things that were very much planned and part of the whole operation. When that event happened, it was it did put these dark forces in a position to have a tremendous amount of additional control on of the planet because there was so much fear and so much the way they were manipulating everything in the media and all of it and so what happened then is it sent a signal to the solar system because our planet is a chakra in the body of the solar system we're not just isolated a little world, you know, floating in space. We are part of a greater system, the solar system. Every planet is a chakra in the body of the solar system. So when that control came after 9-11, the Solar Council, the group that is responsible for the whole planning and unfoldment of the solar system, looked at the condition of Earth and said, the Earth as a chakra is so dark, so controlled, that the, the solar system could not move forward in its evolution, which it had been waiting to do for quite a long time, waiting for humanity and the spiritual masters to throw off the control of these dark forces and be able to illuminate the planet. But with 9-11, it became clear that they were not going to be able to do that and because the control was increasing. And so the, the solar council made a decision at that level that the time had come to remove that group of invading aliens who were holding the whole thing as the leadership of the dark side to remove them from the planet. And that it was a decree that came down from the Solar Council, remembering that the Solar Council was the one that allowed them to stay in the first place. Okay? So they gave permission to the galactic civilizations, these all these other civilizations around our Earth, to use the, the, their ability to re either remove them or turn them to the light, all those diff those 50 leaders of the dark side. And over and that was in 2002 was that decision, and that was implemented over the next five, seven, eight years. And there are now no longer any of those um, other external predatory type aliens on or around Earth. So then they also gave permission to the galactic civilizations to increase the amount of light and love they were radiating to humanity and to directly start to support every human being who's doing anything positive to help liberate the planet and help other human beings that includes leaders ordinary light workers everybody is being given more and more light 
and more and more energy to do their work, which is what has stimulated the awakening. You call it the Arab Spring, all the awakenings going on all over the world has been the result of this energy that is pouring into our planet now that hasn't been there before. And, okay, okay I'll, stop, yeah. I'll stop there. No, very, yeah, yeah okay. Uh, but how, how would you relate that, though, to what's going in pl- on in play countries like Syria with ISIS um, and, and, and Iraq with ISIS? Right. right. And, and um, you know, in, in bigger pictures like that, for example. Right. Okay, well, just to clarify this, the leadership was taken off, the, all the ET leadership, and that's was a whole realm. That's where all the leadership of the what people call popularly the cabal was gaining their direction and leadership. Once that happened, the cabal no longer had that uh, that direction and, and higher vision or controlling vision. And therefore, they became very confused. And a lot of things started happening. If you notice, the systems are becoming more and more unstable. They're less and less reliable. The whole thing is starting to really get very shaky because they don't know how to keep it together very much longer. ISIS or ISIL is a creation of the cabal funded through various countries, including Israel and and other parts of the Middle East, to create more fear, more chaos and upheaval. The goal always is to create more fear. Which, because they are hoping that by creating fear, they'll find it new ways to control and manipulate humanity's uh, experience. Same with the Paris shootings. There's always this goal to create fear, and the ultimate goal is to create a war between the Muslim Islam and Christianity. That's their immediate goal, because they don't want to have any kind of rapprochement between the two as that will allow, it will frustrate their major plan, which is we need to have a war between, they think we need to have a war between Islam and Christianity. ISIS is a part of that of that, that goal. But it's not going to work because what's happening now is there, as a result of all this new energy pouring into the planet, the light forces have joined with the leadership of Earth. And I'm talking about heads of state and many others who are actually have created a plan on how to create a transition from the current system we have so that we change the financial system so that debt and interest-based currency and all that is not the basis of the system anymore. We have interest-free money, loan forgiveness, all this put into place, that we have a cleaned up political system that you have to demonstrate that you are capable of doing fair representation of the people you're supposed to represent without becoming a tool of the cabal. All these things are being gradually and steadily put into place. And I can give you lots and lots of examples of how that's being done. So... It's, it's it's interesting. It's so interesting. And what you were saying before about um, you know uh, the you know being of service and and how that's being allowed to be expressed more clearly now with a lot of light workers. But do 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 you think that you know most jobs in a sense are of service? Do you think most people are being of service? They're coming from that space when they're doing work, or are they coming from the wrong space of you know uh, doing it for other reasons well, and not being happy? You know, most people are. You know, people have to make a living. Of course. You know, so, so they, they, they will do what they can uh, find them to do. And, it, 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 you know, and I think many, many people would pr- do want to contribute their best talents and abilities to make the world better. I mean, and we see that tremendously with all the volunteerism. A lot of time work that people have to do in their jobs is not very inspiring or doesn't give that many opportunities to serve you know it's a lot of it is very rote repetitious kind of work but it's also being able to connect in your consciousness how what you're doing is a contribution to the larger whole if you can that's that's very helpful well that's so true you know if you're making a difference in the job that you're doing surely that has a and i'm coming from a, 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 a different type of space, a more loving space in a sense. I mean, you know, mm-hmm. uh, surely that has ripple effects to those around you. If, if you want to change the world, maybe you'd start with changing yourself. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yes. And 
the sort of you know leading on to what you were saying about the light workers still as well do you not feel that there's a new generation of light workers that have been sent to this planet that are becoming aware now of what what they're meant to be oh, doing oh absolutely i mean you must there see is... it. hmm you must see it oh i see it all over the place and and i think it's like you know, who comes from the the 60s generation and we i interact a lot with younger people really do appreciate the in a sense we laid a lot some groundwork in consciousness in the 60s and 70s and 80s make it possible for many of the things to actually now come into more complete flowering you know and then of course the internet itself has made a tremendous uh, shift in the way we can function and the impact that we can have worldwide and and the younger people are just so extraordinarily adept at using that medium. And uh, one of my favorite groups is Avaz. I don't know if you know of it, but it's an international group that every time there's a crisis in the world, they mobilize you know millions of dollars and millions of letters to go to heads of state and any other buddy that needs to be made aware of how much public opinion there is against something when they're doing something really horrible and it's had a huge effect it's really been a it's a very powerful group and there are many 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 groups like this and that's that's part of the awakening and part of the new way that the younger generation is is impacting the planet with what information the master's bringing through for yourself um what are some of the more immediate next steps of, of, of signs of change would you say that we're going to see Yes. Well, I think one of the most important is a re complete reorganization of the financial system because financial stress and scarcity is one of the ways that the control is maintained over people. So by changing that and you know moving away and taking people out of debt, changing and creating a new currency that's not debt-based, which re would reduce the price of everything by 50% because 50% of the cost of every product and service is the cost of borrowing the money to, to create it. All of that could be changed very radically with some changes in the financial system, which are currently being worked on. That's one of the things that is, is being done. Um, I think that we have a lot of work being done around the, the, the climate issue and global warming and, you know, and, it's so interesting to me. I mean, there are these figures emerging on the world stage like Pope Francis, who is, in a sense, one of the leaders of the Light Alliance because the work that he's done, basically what the leaders do is they're creating a shift in the, in the, in the framework, in the paradigm, because Pope Francis is saying, we have to take care of the poor. We have to, take, we have to protect the environment for all future generations. We have to... Um, not become slaves of capitalism and sell ourselves to the capitalist system. All these kind of things are very, very important in reshaping the way we think and what's possible and what needs to change. Because one of the causes of despair for a lot of people is they know the system is not working. They know it's not working for them and for the world. And it just seems so overwhelmingly huge. They don't know how it could be changed and what to yeah. do. And yet, you know, everything we do, because of the unified field of consciousness, every little thing we do that she changes, brings more light into our own being, more love in our relationships, in our work, and whatever we can do, ripples out through the whole field and helps raise the frequency and change the consciousness everywhere. I, I, and that's what we were saying before, wasn't it? This idea that, you know, if you, if you really don't like the world you're living in, change yourself to begin with. Right. That's right. the most powerful way to do it. It is. And it's yes, something you totally have control over. Uh, <laughs> absolutely. Yeah, some people will say, well, that's just the silliest thing ever because, you know, how's that making a bigger a, a change on the world? But just listen back to this, guys, and the words that Gordon just said there. And, and that's the reason why. Yeah. Um, okay. Um, but if, you know, that's not putting people off with a bigger life calling, of course. If you feel you've got a bigger life calling to go out there and help people in a way that you want, that, that, that you may be aware of what it is, whatever gift that you've got, go right. for it because it will pay Absolutely. back tenfold. Absolutely. And there are many, many beautiful, very conscious souls who are getting a very clear inner vision or information about what is it they, that their contribution is and how they can do it. And they're doing it. 
I mean, just going out and creating all kinds of projects and, you know, new initiatives. Everywhere you look in every field, there's just so much creativity and it's wonderful true. new energy coming in from all the, the younger generation, the older generation. And plus, it's being reinforced by the Light Alliance. I call it the Light Alliance matching grant system because they have to calibrate how much light they pour into us on, based on how much we make the effort to liberate ourselves. Because they have to balance this because they cannot violate our free will. They're not going to come and do it for us. But they are going to support us in every little thing we do that's positive and helpful. We will get additional energy to help support that. Yes. And, and, it's, and it's also, I think, coming together and realizing that we're all one. If we just realize that that we're, we're all, you know, family, you know, no matter if we're different religions, we're all still part of the human race as well. I was talking about one is in the sense that we all go back to the same uh, energy field when we pass on. But, Absolutely. you know, also there's the idea that we are, guys, you know, all human as well. <laughs> you know, <laughs> yes. we could have some respect for each other a bit a, right. a bit more. Right, um, right. Uh, what does the master say about the, 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 the religions in a sense not being the issue that's causing the dividance, but uh, h how to bring religions together so that, you know, we we don't have this separation in a sense of, of I'm right, you're wrong. Well, my truth better than your truth. I have a, I have a, I'll give you a different perspective on all this because it's a little bit, it's definitely outside the box, but um, I think it, it's important to know what I'm getting. This is just what I'm receiving. This is where I've been sharing with people. That basically, we're in a process of intensification of spiritual energy on this planet. It's getting more and more powerful, which stimulates both the positive and the negative in people. So the, 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 the aspects, all the things unresolved in people, that gets stimulated as well as all the wonderful positive things that you know, people get inspired to do. That energy is going to continue to accelerate and accelerate to a point where there is going to be a huge, tremendous release of love on this planet at a level, intensity, and frequency that's never been present here before. And that energy will flow in, and people will need to vibrate to that frequency of love in order to be able to remain on this planet. If people do not have a capacity to at least understand that love is a principle that you know that you, that love is very very fundamental to everything on, in in the in, in the universe it doesn't mean you have to be perfectly loving all the time but you have some capacity to resonate to love people who have that ability will be fine be able to remain here all those people who are filled with the lower frequency energy and hatred violence separateness Greed, selfishness, all that intense negativity, which is being brought to the surface now so intensively, they simply will not be able to remain here. And they will be not here. They will be gone. And that what will remain will be the people who are able to understand love as a principle and be here to rebuild and recreate this world as a beautiful, lighted, new world home for humanity and the nature kingdoms and take our rightful place within the cosmos. And ultimately that will lead to once we have a stabilization and there is everyone is taken care of food, shelter, clothing, health care, education, an opportunity for every single human being that remains on the planet. Then once that is all stabilized, then we will open up the possibility of contact with higher galactic civilizations directly what people call disclosure yes yes i mean that connection is probably already available should you want to have that that communication if you believe in it as in receiving or channeling yes um, you can have that conversation yeah, now yes yeah, sure. but 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 I'm, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm talking about coming forward in actual 3d yes absolutely of course of course what about those out there suffering 
What about those out there suffering from depression, suffering from the pain of their past, suffering from yeah, being their worst enemy to themselves and not forgiving themselves for things that they've done? Mm-hmm. Um, and how, how, how is any of that contributing towards what we're talking about here? Is it part of the soul's um, growth? I suppose it, it, it is in a sense. But how, how can people like in, in some of those situations that may be coming across your work now heal themselves and, and, and sort of embrace what you're saying as well. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I believe that this moment in history, in our history as human beings on this planet, is the most significant moment. It's in beyond anything we've ever experienced, except maybe when we were first created and there was individuation on the planet. And, and so everyone now has the opportunity to move through those kind of patterns you're describing, de- depression, self-judgment, guilt, um, you know, all those things. We do, we do have the opportunity to release those patterns in that karmic cycle of all those things and recognize that we are basically fundamentally divine beings occupying a human form and that that's the essential nature of who we are. We are pure light. We are pure love. That's, that's who we are. And when, if we can, people can take that opportunity and recognize that in themselves. And there's a tremendous amount of information and teaching and courses and things and processes that can help people do that right now. Huge. It's massive. And so it just requires a choice, a conscious choice by people to say, okay, I'm tired of being so messed up, judging myself, guilty, sad, depressed. I'm going to find out what I can do about this. And I'm going to go out and look and find somebody to help me and make move out of this. That's the choice that people can make. Do you think that it's a choice? They do? Okay, so that's a choice to do that. Do you think they can help themselves without having to go find someone else? I mean, you, you use some beautiful words there, like, you know, as in realizing that you're a soul and that you're, 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 you've been forever and that you are really just ultimately, uh, um, you, you know, j- just light. Uh, a, a light being and, and pure love, even though uh, unconditional love, even though some of these words won't resonate with some people because, you know, what is that in a sense? Uh, it, 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 what, what could we do in this moment to, 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 to sort of, okay, so we can, we can bring those in and there's, like you said, there's lots of information out there where, you know, other books that can, that can help us as well with, with getting into that space. space. But, you know, in this moment now, um, it, by remembering, that's one thing. But it's, I suppose it's really, you know, because we can slip sometimes, can't we? We can slip oh, and, sure. uh, you know, we, we can fall we again. That's yeah, that's the process. Yeah, uh, but yeah. it's picking ourselves back up and re- remembering, hey, it's okay. Listen, you've made yeah. a mistake there again. Remember what you are and what, what the potential is of what you are. Right. And by coming from that space, you may find something much better than not coming from that space. Exactly. Yeah. You, you, it, it's, it's learning how to be your own best friend, how to really work with, and we all have parts in ourselves, in our subconscious, the critic, the judge, the, you know, the guilty one, whatever, low, low self-esteem parts, all of those. It's like learning about those, and I do a lot of work with people one-on-one with people all over the world on Skype, and help them to work with those parts of the subconscious and actually help them change and grow and move into be- making a positive contribution to your your actual life and your purpose rather than becoming this drag that pulls you down yes all the time. That's so important. See, what you're doing there is so important because, yes, you've got this wonderful information. It's always pouring out of yourself, you know, and, and, and it gives you a foundation to look at life in a different perspective and everything else. But by, by doing the work that you do, and we'll get into that now, you know, in, in, in the sense of this healing work, um, mm-hmm. uh, you know, you, you then are, tr- uh, you know, transformation transfiguration is happening in the in in the moment now yeah. so yeah. so just tell us about the services you, you offer and, and 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 what how that works you know for people that aren't close to you and remote basically sure um i do um this type of one-on-one work it's really the goal is to integrate your conscious self with your soul and with your subconscious most people have some degree of connection to their soul when they try to do what their soul is asking then all the resistances and all the challenges and parts that are not in agreement from the subconscious get stimulated and that's when all the difficulties start 
So I work with people to help them learn how to love their subconscious, actually realize it's a living part of you. It's a very important part of us. We don't understand it and give it very much attention by loving it, appreciating it, and learn how to make it your friend and your ally and to work with any parts in your subconscious that are actually uh, causing difficulties and help them understand they are part of you, they are part of your soul purpose, and that they can make a huge contribution to fulfilling your soul purpose. And when those parts in your subconscious discover that, then they get very changed. They're willing to change and grow and, and orient towards helping you rather than just trying to follow some strategy to make you safe, which is what they're usually trying to do, trying to protect you in some way by by some strategy of hiding or running away or, or fighting or whatever it is in order to make you safe. So you work with the parts and you find out why they do what they do and help them to change the patterns. It's not that difficult. You just have to know what the, the, the way to do it. So that's one thing I offer. And, and you, you can go to our website, livethefuturenow.com. And there's a thing I have there, um, which is a, to sign up for a, a brief one-hour uh, consulting uh, thing, you can do that. And then um, we, I'm also offering a ongoing course called Accelerating Your Evolution Training. And it's once a month on the internet for two hours and for six months. And that's going, that's starting in January on January 9th. And it's a basically teaching all the techniques and processes that I have learned and have worked with people over the years in doing trainings and workshops and seminars. So it's all about um, bringing more light into your system, how you work with that in meditation, working with your chakras, bringing light into your DNA to help your health and to work with your subconscious and all the parts of it. So that's a training I'm offering also on livethefuturenow.com. And then I have the uh, final thing is the Galactic News Updates from the Light Alliance, which is a monthly show where I, for an hour and a half, will give all my latest inputs that I'm receiving in my conversations about what's going on in the world, what's causing it, and why it is the way it is. So that's all there on livethefuturenow.com. And, and of course, you know, we've barely scratched the surface on the book. And I say this with a lot of guests that come on, but we really have. There's so many, you know, chapters and, 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 and sub-chapters sub, sub as well, or sections of sub-chapters. We, yes. we've, we've scratched the surface with the right. book and you can, as well. And you can get the book on Amazon. Yeah. It's called The Transfiguration of Our World, How a Light Alliance is Transforming Darkness and Creating a New Earth. What would you say, then, if you could do, is the most important message of your work? That we're not alone. We have help available if we ask for it. It's available to all of us. That we are essentially divine spiritual beings of light and love. And anything less than that is just an illusion. And we're in the process of peeling away all those false images and illusions to discover the truth of our identity, which is we are creative beings. We create our life, our experience, and we can create the world in the most beautiful image we possibly can imagine for all of us. Well, Gordon Asher Davidson, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Well, we've come to an end on tonight's show. Don't forget that you can listen and watch all our past interviews on the More Show's official YouTube channel. Remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel for new daily shows. You may also find out more on all past and upcoming guests on the show via themoreshow.co.uk and do like us on Facebook and Twitter for the latest updates. So until next time, be safe.